Hey guys, I'm gonna try something new today. I'm, hopefully you guys like this new format, but what I'm gonna go over today is the top five mistakes when using Copilot Studio. We've learned a lot of lessons by being involved with implementations with some of our biggest customers over in our PowerCat organization. And I wanna be able to take those lessons and give them back to the community so that you guys can know what you should not be doing or things that you need to be doing or common mistakes that are made when you're going to go use Copilot Studio. So let's go take a look at number one. So with number one, it's thinking that knowledge is ingested when the reality is that knowledge inside of Copilot Studio is not ingested directly into your solution. Everyone thinks, oh, I'm gonna upload this Word document or this PDF file, and as a result, it's somehow gonna magically just be part of my solution, and now it's gonna know everything about this file. But it's not, that's not what you're doing. Knowledge is actually a rag pattern. It's actually search and summarization is what it does by default. So what's gonna happen is you're going to search the document and get chunks of it back, not the entirety of the document. So as far as Copilot Studio is concerned, you're just saying, hey, I'd like to ask questions about this document, not I want you to understand the content of this document. And that's a very big common mistake that we run into. If you want to ingest the entire document in, that's where you're gonna to have to use prompts or the prompt builder, or you're gonna go into Azure AI Foundry and do that. So just be aware, this is probably one of the biggest mistakes that we run into, and that is why we start with it being the first one that we talk about today. So now let's go and look at number two. Number two is being too short with topic model descriptions. Unfortunately, a lot of people go and they use their topics and now we have generative orchestration. It used to be in the old orchestration engine, you used to be able to say things with, uh, where you could say, here's five different ways to say the thing uh, that you're wanting it to do. But now where we are is it's completely different because it, now we are in a large language model implementation. We're not training a language model. But unfortunately, people don't think about what you wanna put inside of your topic description on how it should fire inside that model. And so a lot of people just put in a very short sentence or just say, this is to help me with HR related questions. That's not good enough for you to be able to pull it in. So you can do many different things. Like a great example is try putting in what it shouldn't do. Not just what it should do, but what it shouldn't do. You know, do this, but never do that. Oh, and by the way, when you get done doing this, also go fire this other topic. So uh, an example that I have a lot is I show where I wanna be able to create a PO and then I wanna turn around and then I wanna say, oh, okay, if you go and create a PO, go ahead and submit it for approval and just call this other topic so that it can go ahead and do the approval for me. And oh, by the way, don't ever ask the question of should you go get the approval? Just go do it. So these are things that people do commonly inside of topics that maybe you need to think about that description a little more and showcase to people how to be able to do things a little differently. So now let's go on to number three. So for number three, we're gonna have not using reusable components in their implementation, such as component collection or re reusable topics, and then trying to also use an agent as a component. So I kind of combine these together because of the fact that a lot of people don't know that there are component collections. I've got several videos on my channel where I talk about specifically how you should be using component collections because that is how you build reusable components inside of Copilot Studio. So you need to go and learn about component collections if you haven't used them before. 
The other thing is, is that we have capabilities to be able to create a topic. You can just not put anything into the trigger and so that there's never any time it's going to trigger it, but then you can always call that topic from another topic to be able to do the same thing over and over again. So imagine you wanted to go through some sort of process to evaluate for personal identifiable information or something like that. I could create a topic that just simply does that and then call it from the other topic. And what you can do is call it, and then when it gets done, it'll go right back in and finish your topic. So the idea is this is a way that you can go and do things like this without having to rebuild it and do it over and over and over again. So this is one of the things that a lot of people don't know about or don't know that you can do. And when we talk about component collections, again, this is the ability to be able to have reusable assets. And not only can I make those reusable assets because they are basically nothing more than taking pieces of your agent and putting them into their own solution, you can also make those things managed and you can redistribute them to other team members. So this gives you the ability to have a component model where somebody who's using that component can choose when they're gonna take the update. They don't have to take the update just because you decided that you were gonna update that component collection. They can choose when they want to do it and when they wanna merge that into their code solution. And that's why you don't use agents in this way. It's one of the reasons that you don't use agents in this way, I should say, because agents are intended to be self-contained applications. So when we use agents, you're gonna think of agents more as these are things that are gonna stand on their own. There's a completely different dev team, a completely different development lifecycle management that's being done for this application. And it's more of an integration than it is that you're going to go take this thing and somehow use it as the solution for everything. So just be aware that I would recommend highly that you think about, is this thing a standalone thing so that I decide I'll use it as a connected agent? Is it more than just a component? Because if it's a component, use a component collection. It, you're gonna get a lot better results and better performance and not have to worry about security handoffs and things of this nature than using agents or you know connected agents. Now, inline agents is a little different, but go watch the uh, overview that I have on my channel on agents to make sure you understand the difference between a focused or an inline agent versus a connected agent. A lot of people think they're gonna build connected agents as microservices, but microservices are stateless and conversational applications are never stateless. So let's go on to number four. So number four is not treating data as code. A lot of people don't realize that whenever you're going to build a solution using generative AI and you're gonna go point it at a data source, you have to keep in mind that if you're pointing it at a PDF document, that everyone in the company has the ability to modify it and you're not, you have no change management control over that PDF file, then you're creating yourself a situation where you have no control over what's going to actually happen with, with the application. So when you start thinking about, oh, I've got this PDF and I want to take that PDF or this Word document or Excel file or whatever, and you're wanting to add it in as knowledge, you might want to think about who has the rights to be able to modify this knowledge. Maybe I should create it inside of SharePoint and come up with a publishing strategy that puts it in a location where it then is published into my agent. That way I can go through testing, make sure that there's no content issues with this. It also keeps you protected from, I don't know, maybe I want to be able to always be able to take business class flights because you know I'm special. And therefore, what I'm gonna do is go modify a file on travel policy that says that I'm allowed to take uh, inter any flight I want first class, no problem. And then I go modify that file and then ask the question against my HR agent, can I do this? 
And then the next thing I know, I've got a snapshot for HR that I can protect myself with that says, hey, I'm not allowed. Uh, you can't say anything about that because I have it proof right here from our HR agent that I can do it. How was I supposed to know? So again, these are things, not necessarily are people going to be this malicious, but you have to think about this example because of the fact that when you are using this data, that data where it sits at rest and where you're indexing it and where you're adding it in, you want to make sure you have controls around this. This is where oversharing of data is a massive issue for a lot of organizations as they move into generative AI. So make sure that you think about that when you are actually building your solutions and when you're going to go and think about your knowledge. So let's now move on to number five. Number five is treating structured data and unstructured data the same. This is probably the number one thing. We have a community office hours inside of Microsoft and I take on calls from people, hundreds of people every other week to talk to them about the situations that they're working on and the challenges that they're running into. And in, I can't tell you, most of those calls, even though it's only an hour, I will get at least three questions on this one item where people are going, I have an Excel file and I went and I uploaded it over here or I put it in SharePoint and I don't like the results that are coming out of this particular data. Well, that's because it's structured data. It's got a structure to it, so it has rows and columns. And so therefore, if you don't understand the structure of the data, you really don't get the understanding of the data itself. Now, when we talk about the M365 Copilot today, as of today, it has the ability to do things where it can calculate different pieces of information. And so therefore, that capability, you'll see a little bit better result whenever you have the ability to do calculations and things like this as part of the model that's looking at this. But it's far from perfect. It's never really going to get you to where you want to be when you're trying to ask questions over structured data. Because you need to really think about, I need to build a query and then I need to answer the question over the data itself. The other problem you run into is when you throw it into Excel, what if it has a million rows? Are you really going to return a million rows? Why wouldn't you form a query through a tool or an action and be able to form that query and filter down to the specific data you want and return that back to the model? That'll save you a lot of tokens, a lot of time, a whole lot of effort. And not only that, it gives you the ability to explain what this row and this column actually mean in the data set. And so if you can explain the structure and you can form the query, then you get such better results. This is why Azure SQL and the Dataverse knowledge items have the ability to go in and show the structure of the data and be able to explain it because those knowledge sources have that ability to explain the structure of the data so that you can do dynamic query assessment. So it can figure out what you're asking and then create a query that will go get the information from the table the correct way and understand that data. So this is going to give you a lot better results long term. Matter of fact, that's why the how to hit Excel one that uh, video that I did on my channel is the most popular video on my channel is because everyone runs into this problem because they always look at Excel, which I would refer to as semi-structured data, and they always try to hit it as rag pattern. They try to hit it as unstructured data and they're getting frustrated with the results. This is why this is one of the most important items on the list today and probably one that I would recommend that you guys go watch the extra video that I have on my channel on this. I hope that you guys will find this to be very helpful with me going in and giving you guys some of the top challenges that we're seeing in the world today when it comes to Copilot Studio. And if you like this video and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. 
And please, in the comments below, give me feedback on, do you like these type of uh, pieces of content? Would you prefer for me to uh, invest a little bit more in these kind of pieces of content, as well as I will continue, to, as always, to do the content that I've always done around how to be able to do things in the education series on my channel. I will put this video into the education series, but I'm also interested in the comments. Do you guys think I should run a separate playlist for you for, for these type of videos where I give you some insight on what you should be doing and how those things uh, should be done or where we see common mistakes? I hope that you guys enjoyed this and as always, go check out Copilot Studio. You can go try it today at aka.ms slash try Copilot Studio. You guys have a great day.